Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Sea Shot Tees. Why and I'm going to so say it, <laughs> I'm going to say it like this the whole time. I'm not going to do that, it would drive Ryan crazy. You say, <laughs> there was several accents involved and none of them were piratey. Well, yeah, it was. Sea Shot Tees. It's a whole new accent. Okay, so anyway, this <laughs> game is designed by Andrew X. Hunter. The artwork is by uh, Maria Gandolfo and also Andrew X. Hunter. And it is published by Pletus Games. In this game, basically, you are a pirate. You are roaming the seven seas, trying to be the best pirate you can. Uh, because ultimately, at the end of your life, you want to have looked back on your life and have a life worth singing sea shanties about. You want to have lived sea a life. Sea shanties! Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Live a life that is worth singing about in taverns the world over. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to be the best pirate you can, roaming around the board, picking up plunder and loot and attacking everybody. Let me show you how to play. In Sea Shanties, everyone's going to get their own personal player board. Basically, on the ship here, on our deck, we have all of our different crew members. We also have some crew members that we can recruit later on over at the tavern. This is also where we're going to place all of our, our loot and our resources as we gather them. And later on during the game, we're going to be able to kind of bury them on the map. So over here, we have some different uh, scoring opportunities. These are our ballads. Basically, each one of those ballads represents one of the resources in the game. As soon as you collect three of one of those resources, you are eligible to gain that ballad. However, later on in the game, if someone surpasses how many of that resource they, they, that you have, they're able to claim that for themselves. So let's say uh, the gold resource, I've got three of it, I'm able to take that privateer ballad. But later on, Bethany comes behind me and she gets four of it. She's able to take that from me. Those points are now hers. So whoever's holding them at the end of the game gets those points. We also have what's called verses. All these cards here together are verses. We have a lore card and we have a melody card. Together they make a pairing called a verse. On the lore part, there's going to be some kind of requirement, some kind of objective that you're trying to meet. And on the melody side, there's kind of some kind of a special ability or some kind of a bonus that you get as a result of winning that thing. On your board, you have spots for two of those melodies. You can place this on your board. You can have two of them active at a time. Those verse pairings are also going to be victory points at the end of the game. Every player also has kind of this player aid. It goes through different things you can do on your turn. So the actions that you can do, you can sail around, you can plunder, which means you can either drop off or pick up crew, you can abandon crew behind, and you can recruit new crew from the tavern, or you can fight people out in the open seas. This is how it's going to work out. You're going to do all your actions. That's going to be where all those uh, previous five things we talked about, that's where you're going to do those. The berry phase is where you move things over from your deck over to your map. And then we have the collect phase. You're going to be able to kind of do an area control island thing on the map, which I'll show you in just a moment. Whoever's controlling an island during this collect phase is going to be able to uh, create some resources and put them on their deck. Here is our map board. It's made of these different kind of cloth tile pieces that we're going to be kind of randomizing, putting them all over the board. We're going to start on these little green islands here, and basically we had a chance to move around the board to try to take out each other. We're going to be attacking each other, as well as collecting resources on these islands. So on your turn, you're going to be able to kind of drop off crew members on islands to show that you control it. So you can even drop them off on a starting island, even though there's no resources that you get from a starting island. You can drop off as many as you want for one action. You can also move around. These arrows show that you have a favorable wind. So basically you can move two spots for just one action, which is really nice. Conversely, going backwards against the wind would cost you additional actions. If you drop off crew members on an island that has resources, like in that case we have uh, the great pickaxe resource as well as the fish resource, during the collect phase of your turn, you are going to be able to gain one each of those resources to, to be able to put into your ship. However, someone could come along and put more of their crew members on that same island. Whoever has the majority is going to be the one who has control over it and gain those resources. Controlling islands is also one of the ways that you can get victory points at the end of the game. There are four different resources that you can gather just by regularly moving around on the board. There's a fifth resource called Fear that you can only get by attacking and defeating other pirates. So what you do when you attack another pirate is, you have to be in the same square as them, and then what you're going to do is you're going to secretly show how many of your crew members that you are willing to spend by turning this dial to that number. So let's say you're willing to spend six, and your opponent, they're willing to use four. Whoever used more of their crew members, they're going to be declared the winner, they're going to get that fear token. They're also going to get a chance to plunder some goods from you based off the difference of how many crew were used. So in the case of six versus four, I would be able to gain two of those resources from the other person's ships. However, once the loot has been buried, 
buried, it is off limits. The person who wins the attack, they're going to have to lose some of their crew members. They're going to be left behind, uh, basically, whatever the difference is. So in the case of six versus four, again, two of your crew members are going to be lost and have to go back to the tavern. So again, looking at the map here, the actions that you can do are sailing around, moving around on the board. You can drop off crew members. It's called plundering. You can also abandon crew members for an action. So let's say someone else took control of this particular island. You don't plan on coming back to it anytime soon. Those people are just kind of sitting there doing nothing. What you can do is you can abandon them. And what you do is you just take them, you put them back on the tavern map, so you can acquire them again later. And speaking of that, the next action is recruit. What you can do is you can take one of the crew members from the tavern and put it onto your deck. And of course, the last action is the sea battle, which we just talked about. So the game is going to end once the entire row of battles has been acquired, or once all of the lore cards have been revealed and the deck has run out. At that point, we're going to count up all of our points. You're going to get points based off of all of the lore cards you've achieved, all of the different battles that you've achieved, and all of the islands that you control. Whoever has the most victory points wins the game. I think it's really cool that the tiles were these cloth pieces of paper. I, they're just really neat, and it, it reminds you, it, it gives you this idea of like treasure maps, right? They'd be on this cloth thing that you're trying to figure out, or this parchment, and it gave you that feel of what you were doing as a pirate. Also, side note to the game, um, the game says that it is environmentally friendly and you can go to their website to find out how that is. See? 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 Now that you've revealed this is not really the box I'm holding, it's just the box lid. <laughs> <laughs> you sold me out. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, there was no plastic in this, it was all environmentally friendly, which was pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so I want to talk about uh, the verses in this song that you can try to achieve. So you have a melody and you have a lore. They're randomly dealt out there, and what you're trying to do is, um, together they're called a verse. And you're trying to achieve these verses, one of the cards gives you a, a recommend, you know, requirement that you have to fulfill. And then the other card gives you a benefit, and some kind of a bonus you have in the game, some kind of rule-breaking special ability that you now have. So it's, it's randomly paired up, each time you play it's going to be different. So maybe you have to collect some resources, maybe you have to attack a certain amount of times. No matter what you have to do, it's going to be paired up with some other kind of benefit that allows you to move extra, take extra actions, or whatever the case is, it'll give you more resources. Those pairings are really, really fun. You want to get as many of those verses as possible, which is also the game in trigger. Uh, but yeah, those are really, really powerful. Um, I thought it was. I liked how the game um, like tied into the title. See shanties, right? You're creating these melodies, and like Ryan said, you're trying to create these things together to get a verse. And so, see shanties. It's about music, and you're doing all this music stuff. So I like how um, they are able to tie that together. The resource and gathering in this game was pretty neat, and I liked being able to gather it. I like how you could also kind of conquer it. I like how you kind of, you know, it built up. At the same time, I will say that it felt like the buildup was almost too quick, a little too strong. Um, there was games that we played where we only played like literally two turns each. We played a three-player game at one point that we all only got two turns and we were able to achieve all those different verses. They had all this big setup and all this, you know, ready to play this game, and then it was just over. Yeah. It was kind of unsatisfying in that way. The ramp up was just too too great, too steep of a ramp up. Yeah. And there's ways that you can, the more you fight, the more that kind of it backs off of that. But still, it felt like, um, I don't know, for as cool as all the resource gathering was, yeah. um, that you didn't get the payoff. Yeah, it was kind of like the difference between like starting a car and building a car. Right. Like you're, you're still in this vehicle and it's still doing this thing, but that was the kind of like different mode of that. Yeah, so overall, this gave me some really cool pirate vibes, right? There's a lot of pirate games that don't give you the full pirate experience. Um, so this one did give you some of those pirate experiences. It had a cool background and a cool theming to it. The gameplay did fall a little flat for us. This is not going to be one that I remember reaching off the shelf for, you know, on a regular basis. But still, if you're looking for a piratey game, kind of brings in that melody and those combos, Sea Shanties might be for you. This game reminded me of if you've ever been to Gen Con and there's always those group of people that just like travel places and they just start singing like those like like piratey songs or gypsy lake songs and they just show up <laughs> everywhere. Like I don't know why this game just reminded me of it. Like almost like these people need to be carrying around this game to try and sell it because they just go together. So that's what it reminded me of. And when I think of this game, I'm thinking of if anybody knows piratey gypsy yes, songs gonna be sung. Anybody knows the group I'm talking about, let me know in the comments below because I'm like really curious now. But that's what it, it gave me vibes of. Are they gonna be there this year, you think? 
I have no idea. You it, tell me. It's, it's been two years since I've gone, and but every year prior to that, they were always there. Yeah, you tell me when you go. You tell me <laughs> if you see them. I'll take a picture. Yeah, everybody, you can take a video. I'll take a music. video. Okay. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us on all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.